Today, we are looking at the state of artificial intelligence in 13 charts. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. As you probably have garnered at this point, I am a sucker for a big think piece, especially if it has some numbers or data or anything that we can comment and react to. So today for our episode, we are looking at a recent piece by the Stanford University Human-Centered Artificial Intelligence Center called the AI Index, the state of AI in 13 charts. This is a sum up of the Institute's larger AI index, which is a 300 plus page report, and I think does a good job of giving the high levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the charts, discuss Stanford's conclusions, and then I'll share if there's anything that I think differently around or just see it in any sort of different way. Their first note, they call a move towards open source. In 2023, they counted 98 open foundation models, 23 limited foundation models, and 28 with no access. They noted that of the 149 foundation models released in 2023, which was itself double the number released in 2022, 65.7 were open source. That compared to only 44.4% in 2022 and 33.3% in 2021. If you've listened to this show at all, I mean, heck, if you listen to the Mistral section in the brief today, this will probably not surprise you. There has been a huge push towards open source LLMs, with companies like Meta initially leading the charge, and in the process, surprising Google and OpenAI, I will say, and then the banner being picked up by others like Mistral as well. However, Stanford's second chart notes that open comes at a cost to performance. They write, Closed source models still outperform their open source counterparts. On 10 selected benchmarks, closed models achieved a median performance advantage of 24.2%, with differences ranging from as little as 4% on mathematical tasks to as much as 317.7% on agentic tasks. This is a chart that I really don't like. It's not that I disagree that there is still a difference between closed and open models, but I think that this is an area where medians and averages really fall apart. Basically, who cares about not state-of-the-art models? Certainly no one that I know that's actually working with them unless they're making a choice for specific cost reasons. So a better comparison would be, what's the difference between the most performant open source models and the most performant closed models? In other words, what is the gap between open source and GPT-4 class performance? I think the overall result would still show that gap, but it might be less dramatic than it seems here. Next, Stanford notes that, quote, industry dominates AI, especially in building and releasing foundation models. They point out that since 2019, Google has led in releasing foundation models with a total of 40, followed by OpenAI with 20, and Academia far behind, with UC Berkeley releasing three and Stanford releasing two. Once again, no big surprise here, given how much money is at stake with these models. Putting a fine point on that, they note that industry released 108 models last year as compared to Academia's 28, Industry Academia Collaboration's 9, and Government's 4. Next, Stanford notes that the prices for training models has gone up significantly. They write, One of the reasons Academia and Government have been edged out of the AI race, the exponential increase in costs of training these models. They note that Google's Gemini Ultra cost $191 million worth of compute to train, up from OpenAI's GPT-4, which cost an estimated $78 million. In comparison, they point to the original Transformer model from 2017, which cost around $900 to train. The next one might be a little surprising given how much we talk about geopolitical competition around AI, but here's how Stanford sums it up. What AI race? They write, at least in terms of notable machine learning models, the United States vastly outpaced other countries in 2023, developing a total of 61 models. That compared to China's 15, France's 8, Germany's 5, and Canada's 4. I do think that these numbers are telling and important. However, I think that what's more of interest to people who are looking at the race dimension of this is less the number of models and more, once again, the state of the art and the performance of those models. In other words, to people who care about this race, it wouldn't matter if the U.S. released 100 times more models than China if China released the best models. Next up, they talk about how much more performant these models have gotten. They call the chart Move Over Human. They note that when it comes to image classification, basic level reading comprehension, English language understanding, visual reasoning, and multitask language understanding, AI has in general exceeded human performance at this point, and competition level mathematics is getting very close. Of course, this brings up the question of what superintelligence and AGI actually mean, which is, of course, a debate that you see constantly on AI Twitter. Here's another one that might surprise you, given how often we talk about the big money going into AI on this show. Overall, Stanford notes that total AI private investment has actually gone down between 2021 and 2022, and again between 2022 and 2023. Specifically, 2021 saw $132.36 billion invested in AI, down to $95.99 billion in 2023. 
However, generative AI has seen a massive surge, going from 4.17 billion in 2021 to 2.85 billion in 2022 to a 10x increase to 25.23 billion in 2023. So clearly the emphasis in what in AI is being invested in has made a big shift, commensurate with the change in the focus on ChatGPT, MidJourney, and the like. Once again, the United States is seeing the biggest portion of that investment. In 2023, it saw 67.22% of all private investment. Next, almost 60 percentage points behind was China, which saw 7.76% of investment. The UK, which saw 3.78%. And then a set of companies including Germany, Sweden, France, Canada, Israel, South Korea, and India, which all saw between 1% and 2% of total private investment. Here's one that's particularly interesting to us as we are building Super Intelligent, a platform for practical learning around AI. Based on a McKinsey and Company survey, Stanford reported on how businesses are using AI currently. 26% are using it for contact center automation, 23% are using it for personalization, 22% for customer acquisition, 22% for AI-based enhancement of products, and 19% for creation of new AI-based products. Surveys also saw an increase in organizations that said they were using AI in 2023, reaching 55%, which was up from 50% in 2022. What about concerns around AI impacting jobs? Overall, Stanford writes that globally, most people expect AI to change their jobs, with more than a third expecting AI to replace them. Gen Z and millennials are anticipating more substantial effects, with 66% of Gen Z compared to 46% of boomers believing AI will significantly affect their current jobs. Individuals that have higher incomes, more education, and decision-making rules also think that AI will have a bigger impact on their employment. The numbers they quote, 57% believe that AI will change how they do their current job in the next five years, and 36% see AI replacing their current job in the next five years. Stanford also looks at different countries' attitudes towards AI, and specifically where people were worried about it. At the top end of the concern is Australia, with 69% of people saying that AI makes them nervous, while at the bottom end of the spectrum is Japan, who only had 23% worried. Lastly, they looked at the change in regulation. In the United States, the number of AI-related regulations jumped from around 15 to 25 between 2022 and 2023, although, of course, none of those are any sort of comprehensive regulation, which remains the big question going forward. Overall, I think a lot of this probably reflects what you might assume if you're paying a close attention to this space, but it's still really interesting to see this data captured in this sort of way. So big thanks to Stanford University's Institute for Human-Centered Artificial Intelligence for publishing this report. And for now, that's going to do it for the AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.